All right, how you guys doing today? This is Mr. Muscarella coming at you, and in this video, we're going to take a look at the ambiguous case for the law of sines to help us solve oblique triangles. If you don't remember what an oblique triangle is, it just means a triangle that is not right. Now, one of the first things that you want to do is when you see the direction solve the triangle, you want to think to yourself, self, I have to determine if there are zero, one, or two triangles, and then after that, I've got to find all the missing stuff for each one of the triangles. Now, speaking of stuff, let's go ahead and get our calculator stuff sorted out so that we're ready to go. First thing you want to do is get your calculator set up so that it will round to the tenths place and is in the degree mode. Speaking of degrees, in order to find a degree symbol, you want to use the second apps button to get to the angled menu. Now, if you're using a regular TI-83, then there is no apps button. What you have to do is hit second and then the matrix button. Now that your calculator is set up, let's go ahead and take a look at some other review stuff. This is all prerequisite knowledge, things you guys should totally know. First, you should know the sum of three interior angles of a triangle is 180. Next thing that you need to know is that supplementary angles have a sum of 180 degrees. So if you're given one angle, you can find its supplement very quickly and easily. And then the last thing you need to know is the domain restriction for inverse sine or arc sine is from negative one to one, which means when you're using your calculator, when you type in arc sine of blop, that blop, whatever the value is of the blop, that's got to be within that domain restriction of negative one to one. All right, so for example number three, we've got to solve this triangle with this given information. A is 28, C is 40, and the measure of angle A equals 37 degrees. Now again, generally speaking, lowercase letters will represent side lengths in these types of problems. Now, of course, one of the first things that you're going to want to do is two things. First, draw the triangle to represent the situation. The second thing that you're going to want to do is to go ahead and make this chart because that's going to help us term, to determine the number of possible triangles that we have here. Now, after I've got all of that done, what I want to do is analyze the triangle I've got drawn. So I've got this side right here, side CB. I've got this side right here, side AB, or side BA, whichever way you want to call it. And then I've got this angle over here. So I have two sides and a non-included angle. So that's going to give me the side sine angle, or the ambiguous case, which allows me to use the law of sines to help me solve this problem. So here's how I'm going to start this out. We're going to write sine A over A equals sine C over C. Once I've got that kind of organized, then the rest of it is just a matter of solving my proportion. I'm going to substitute values in. Then I'm going to go ahead and solve for sine of C. And remember, when we do that, we're going to use inverse trig. So the measure of angle C is going to be equal to this expression here. When you type that into your graphing calculator, you'll come up with a value of about 59.3 for the measure of angle C. So I'm going to go ahead and put that into my chart. And then what I'm going to use is a triangle sum theorem because I know one angle is 37, the other is 59.3. So I'm going to figure out angle B by subtracting those two values from 180 degrees. When I do that, I end up with 83.7 for the measure of angle B. Now I want to see if I have a second triangle, because right now I know I've got one, but I want to test it to see if I have a second triangle. So what I'm going to do is actually take the measure of angle C that I found, and what I'm going to do is subtract that value from 180. I'm going to find the supplement to my original angle C that I found. And when I do that, I get 120.7 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and fill that in my chart as well. Now, if I take a look at those two angles for case two, 37 degrees and 120.7 degrees, if I add them up and subtract their sum from 180, then I'll get my other possibility for angle B, because their sum is less than 180. When I do that, 
I end up with 22.3 degrees for the other possibility for the measure of angle B. Now what this tells me is that the number of possible triangles that I've got to find is 2. Now how do I find the side lengths for B for two different triangles? Well, I'm going to use the law of sides. So what I'm going to do for that is we're going to start out and we're going to just use A over sine A equals B over sine B for each one of my two cases. Now I'm using A over sine A and not C over sine C because A over sine A was given information. I want to use all, always want to use your given information to find additional information. So when I do that, I'm just going to go ahead and make a little substitution. Go ahead and cross multiply and then put that in my graphing calculator and come up with a value of 46.2. So that gives me the length of side B for case number one is 46.2, but I still have to find the length of side B for case number two. So I'll go through that same process again, but this time, instead of using 83.7, for the measure of angle B, I'm going to use the other angle that I found, the 22.3. So let me give you a second, go ahead and hit pause, work that out, and then come on back and see how you did. All right, how'd you do with this? Hopefully, you came up with 17.7 for the other length of side B. Well, by now, you know how to solve an oblique triangle for the ambiguous case, or side-side angle, by using the law of sides. Thanks for watching, guys, and you have a great day. Peace out.